folks, it's Sarah with Obadiahs, and today I'm here with Dave from Keystoker, and I'm going to interview Dave on our top 10 most asked questions on coal burning appliances. Um, so as mentioned, Dave works with Keystoker. He's been with Keystoker company for 14 years now, um, so he really knows his stuff, and he's gonna answer some questions for you guys. So Dave, our number one question that we get asked is, about coal being dirty. Um, so everybody has, you know, kind of these bad thoughts on coal, that it's not clean burning, that it's hard on our environment. What are your thoughts on that? Well, number one, it's all on how you handle it. Um, you can get oiled coal now. Um, you know, when you take the ashes out, you can run a shop vac, keep the dust down. Um, you can get it pre-washed, which also keeps the dust and dirt out. Um, naturally it's going to be dirty it does come out of the ground um, anthracite coal has been around for many decades um, isn't going anywhere uh, it's the best burning heat the cheapest burning heat uh, you know you're the one that's gonna determine how dirty it is um, it is gonna be dirty but you can limit the dirtiness by how you handle it okay absolutely so next question is going to be what are the um, different sizes and types of coal and what's going to be the easiest to light? Okay, all the coal is going to be the same to light. Um, you're going to start off, you have barley, which is your finest, okay. uh, goes to rice, goes to buckwheat, goes to pea, and then goes to nut and then coal stove. Wow, okay. okay. So um, that kind of leads me into question two. What are going to be the pros and cons of these different types of coal? Well, they're all going to burn the same. They're going to produce the same BTUs. Um, a lot of people have been calling about complaining about clinkering. Okay. And clinkering, what that does is it pretty much forms a big rock is what it is. It's, it's melting together and it molds together. And what happens is when it forms a mold underneath, you can't burn the coal that's on top. So one, you lose BTUs. Okay. And two, you don't get a full burn out of it. Um, a lot of issues come with rice coal because it's so fine. So we recommend burning a buck rice or buckwheat. Okay. Okay. Now on our units, we do offer a direct vent. You cannot burn anything bigger than rice. We got to keep that hopper packed. That way it doesn't suck air from the hopper into the unit. Okay. Great answer. So that leads me into another question. What are the benefits of adding a direct vent system to a coal burning appliance? Okay, direct vent um, are, are more fit for people that don't want to put a chimney up. Okay. Or if they have a chimney that's bad and they don't want to spend the money on repairing the chimney, you can use a direct vent. Okay, absolutely. What kind of cost are we talking about for a direct uh, vent system? Roughly a direct vent system, they, you know, if you have a stove out there right now without a direct vent system, you can convert that. A kit was roughly around 600 bucks, give wow, or take. Wow, way cheaper than a new chimney yep. system. Yes, so. it comes, we, we offer um, your, your uh, stainless, that would be the outside part. Right. Um, for the inside, you can either go with stainless or you can use galvanized. galvanized. Um, you do get a, you'll get a T, a cap, a 24 by four straight piece and a wall kit. Wow, so 600 bucks for a direct vent system. Um, other people, just so you're aware, a regular solid fuel chimney system, really they start at about 1200 bucks. You can spend up to 2200, depending on how many feet of chimney you need and whether you're running it straight up or out through the wall. Uh, so direct vent sounds like a great option for you folks burning coal. Uh, so question number three, what about outside air on coal stoves? Um, is that gonna be similar to a wood stove? Um, Any pros, cons there? As far as outside air, I always felt that was a disadvantage. Okay. Um, they always say the outside air, that way you're not taking all the air from the room. Right. But let's face the facts, nobody's gonna have a completely tight sealed house. Yep. And then when you suck outside air, you just gotta think about it. You're drawing in 30 degree or below temperature air, which is gonna lower your BTUs. Mm -hmm. So if you use the air from the inside to home, it's you're not going to know as much of a difference if you know you use outside air or inside air okay. but my you know opinion on it is i think it's doing more harm than good okay great answer 
So another major question that I get asked all the time is gonna be about daily fuel consumption when burning coal. So let's say that I have a 2,000 square foot home. Um, I live in a fairly cold climate, drops below zero, maybe 10, 20 days a year, and I have an averagely insulated home. What can I expect to burn a day using coal? Well, with a uh, smaller coal stove, uh, you would end up using a five gallon bucket um, we call it a bucket of day coal. Um, you know, if it's zero degrees out, it's surely going to run hard. So you're going to probably use two buckets, okay. roughly. Um, now our boilers, you know, that's doing everything. That's heating your hot water and heating your home. So that's usually, it depends on how much water you use during that day and how cold it really is. Okay. So let's switch that to annual consumption. What are we looking at in tons a year for this? An aver process? average home, you know, if you burn the boiler completely through the season and through the summertime for your hot water, you'll go roughly between six to eight tons. Okay, six to eight tons a year. Okay. Yep. And coal's pretty cheap here. What does yeah, that cost? Uh, well, it, if you get it delivered, it's two twenty-five a ton. Um, or if you pick it up, it can range from one fifty to one eighty a ton. Okay. So yeah. you're, you're roughly looking about, you know, a thousand dollar bill maybe wow. at most. For a year. Um, and, and for the consumption of coal versus oil, it's 180 gallons of fuel oil to a ton of coal is the BTU Comparison. Yep. Wow, 180 gallons. Yep. Yeah, so that's a lot. fuel that's oil, oil kind of, yeah, yeah yes. fuel oil is very volatile. It can shift with the market. Yep, so. yep. Keystoker offers both manual fed systems as well as stoker fed systems. Can you talk to me a little bit about the differences, benefits? Yes, uh, well the benefit would be less work with an automatic stove. Um, they are thermostatically controlled. Okay. So, you know, say you want to set at 70 in the house, you set the thermostat at 70 and forget it. Um, with manual, well you have to rake the fire, get it, you know, blazing to get your heat out of it. Um, and you gotta attend to that at least twice a day. Twice a day. Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, you know, we can. It depends on how far you choke it off. Sometimes you can get um, twelve-hour burn out of it, um, or depending if you need more heat, you're gonna be more adding more fuel throughout the whole day. So okay. it all depends on temperature-wise and um, type of fuel you're burning. Now, does a so stoker system require electricity to operate? Yes, the automatic stoves do require a electric, um, but the uh, amperage draw is very minimal. It's roughly like our biggest unit would draw probably about four to five amps. Okay, so if I had a power outage, could I have a backup battery system you, to they, run it? They do sell battery systems. Um, I recommend just going to get a small portable generator, okay. which works great. Okay. Um, like I said, it's a very minimal amperage. Mm -hmm. So you'll get, I think a 1200 watt generator would work for that. Okay. Um, so you're, you know, you're looking at say five amps with the voltage, you're looking at maybe about 600 watts. Okay. Um, to figure out your um, wattage, you're going to take your amperage times your voltage will equal your wattage. Um, that's good information for when you do uh, research about getting a generator. Excellent. Great answer. Thank you so much. So that's going to lead into maintenance. Talk to me a little bit about maintaining a coal stove. Okay. Um, maintenance, um, the bigger boilers, uh, our, our boilers that are in a home usually are a one-year maintenance program. Okay. Um, as far as direct vents, you're taking a six inch hole and converting it down to a four inch hole. Right. Um, my opinion on that and my recommendation is for every ton and a half to two ton that you burn, you should take apart the uh, four inch and clean it. Okay. Uh, because it gets blocked up. You do have a lot of fly ash. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it wouldn't hurt once a month just to check it out, clean it out and be done with it. Uh, Cause you know, you have carbon dioxide poisoning out there. Uh, there's a lot of people scared of it. Uh, they sell CO2 monitors. Please, please put one in every top of every steps. Um, Excellent. You know, as long as you stay up on maintenance, um, carbon dioxide is not an issue. Okay. Anytime that you see someone dying because of the silent killer is because maintenance was poorly done on the stove or was never done. Okay. Um, some people think just, oh, well, I can wait till next year. No, don't wait. 
That is the number one thing is maintenance. And not only when you do maintenance, it prolongs the life of the, the, of the furnace unit. or Absolutely. the stove. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and this is so true, guys. I get so many people that contact me. Um, they think that maybe their unit is just going to smoke a little bit more or maybe they're producing more emissions into the environment and maybe they don't care about that. But if you care about your family, you care about clean air in your house, please keep your units clean. Clean. This is very, very important, as Dave mentioned. And as you bring up the uh, good point of emissions, um, I know people think that, oh, if coal is dirty, it burns bad. Well, if you look up the research on the, um, between number two fuel and coal, they have the same uh, type of oxygen, CO2, all going in the air. It's the same exact mixture. Um, you're not getting any cleaner air with oil. You're not getting any cleaner air with coal. It all burns the same, it has the same emissions. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you guys who may or may not know, um, it's 2019 right now. And as of still, coal heating appliances are EPA exempt. So you do not need an EPA sticker on those coal units. So I really hope that you guys found these questions and answers helpful. These are seriously some of the most top asked questions I get when burning coal. So thank you so much, Dave. Yep, I really you. appreciate you taking yep. the time. Have a wonderful day, guys. Don't forget, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, click subscribe on our channel. There's a subscribe link in the corner of all of our videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.